it's finally here. We've been waiting for this new version of Procreate for quite a while now, and you can see why. With the new 5.2 version, we can now paint on 3D objects, and I must say it works great. Let's see things in more detail. When Savage Interactive, the company behind Procreate, announced a few months ago that they were planning to add 3D painting to the program, it caught everyone by surprise. And understandably so, 3D is quite a tough nut to crack, and here comes a small company with only a 2D application under its belt, promising texturing on the iPad. I was skeptical at first, but once I started using the app, I couldn't stop grinning. <laughs> These guys know what they're doing, they absolutely knocked it out of the park. From the moment you load a 3D object into the app, you can tell you're in good hands. The whole workflow is full of intuitive interactions. For example, selecting a part of an object is as simple as tapping on it. This allows us to focus on painting that individual part. Assigning a color to an object is equally intuitive. We can either start painting on it, or if we want to speed things up, we can use the fill layer command. The UVs are shared between the whole object, that's why the layers move from one part to the other. It's a small UI interaction, but it immediately tells us what's going on. And of course, if we want to paint on difficult to reach areas, we can just hide the parts that are in the way, like we do with regular layers. By default, we paint on all three maps, the color, roughness, and metallic map. But if we want to focus on one, we can just select it and start painting. Let's say, for example, we want to make this part shinier. We'll go to the metallic map, and then with a white color selected, we'll start painting on it. And now we have a really shiny part. Let's say now that we don't want any imperfections and we just like to have a really smooth reflective surface. These imperfections, by the way, come from the roughness map of this layer here. So to get rid of them is extremely easy. We can go to the roughness map of our new layer and start painting with black. And now our engine part is extremely shiny. Painting with any other value between black and white will give us varying degrees of roughness. So if we start painting with gray and a brush that has some nice randomness to it, we'll introduce more variance to our reflections. As you can see, with this method we can bring in quite a bit of detail to our textures, and all that just by adding layers to our artwork and adjusting the roughness, color, and metallic maps. This is exactly the method I've used in order to paint this model. For example, by erasing parts of this color layer with the eraser tool, I expose the layer underneath, which is this wooden base layer. So if we give another color to the wooden base layer, we will see the new color showing through. And the other way around. If we start erasing the top layer, we'll get to see more of the layer underneath. Now as far as complexity goes, how heavy can our models be? It depends on the amount of memory available on your iPad, but the good news is that we're not really that limited. This model is made out of 244,000 polygons and everything feels great. The navigation is smooth and there's no stuttering while painting. I also tried a 1 million polygon mesh and that works great as well. I even went up to 5 million, and there, there was some slight lagginess when rotating the camera, but while painting, everything is super smooth. I didn't bother going any higher because my models never go this high, but I'm sure with the newer iPad models that have 16GB in memory, models with more than 5 million polygons should be possible. My iPad is the 3rd generation iPad Pro with 6GB of memory. It's a 3 year old model, so you don't really need to have the latest and greatest in order to use the feature. But with the newer models, apart from loading more complex objects, you will also be able to have more layers per object. But even with my iPad, I didn't really feel constrained. I could do exactly what I wanted to do. Exporting the final result is super easy. It's just a matter of picking the format you want, OBJ or USDC, and then loading that up into your favorite program. It really is that simple. Here, I've imported this Joker character in Cinema 4D and continued working on lighting and rendering the final image. This is the kind of seamless experience I love seeing. I managed to texture a model without any limitations on my tablet, and then I moved that model to the desktop to finish up the artwork. It really feels like things are slowly lining up and we get to enjoy a workflow that doesn't just rely on a powerful desktop. We can work on a tablet while on the road or while chilling on the couch and then continue that work on the desktop. Now, let's talk about limitations. 
First off, I need to clarify that these didn't bother me much, but I'm letting you know so you have a clear picture of all the pros and cons. So let's start with UVs. In order to successfully texture an object, you'll need UVs. This is not a big deal if you're a 3D artist, but if this is your first time working with 3D, it's something you need to be aware of. Procreate cannot produce UVs, so whatever object you're importing, it needs to already have them. Shaper 3D, a popular 3D modeling app on the iPad, doesn't produce clean UVs, so if you're importing an object from there, you won't be able to successfully texture it. Unfortunately, there's no iPad app for UV unwrapping, so we have to rely on a computer with dedicated software. Hopefully, now that Procreate offers texturing, developers might be incentivized to build an iPad app for UVs alone. It would be nice if Procreate could do that by default, but unwrapping UVs definitely goes way beyond the feature set of a drawing app. Another thing to keep in mind is that currently we cannot paint on bump and normal maps. From what I've gathered from my tests, if your object contains a normal map, that will be displayed correctly, but it won't be exposed in the layers panel. Being able to draw on normal maps and bump maps would unlock a whole new set of texturing possibilities, so I'm really hoping to see those exposed on a future update. Another thing I would like to see is the ability to load a set of textures after importing an object. Currently, the only way to bring in textures is by importing them along with the object. This behavior limits things quite a bit. If, for example, we made a modification on the color map or the roughness map outside of Procreate, it would be really helpful if we could import that back into Procreate. And uh, speaking about maps, currently we're limited to 4K textures. This might be a deal breaker for some, since the amount of detail we can put in a texture will be limited, but 4K is a decent enough resolution. Ideally, 8K would be perfect, but I'm guessing this is where the memory limitations come into play. Currently, if you try to load a model with 8K textures, you will get an error, so there's no going around that. I think it's one of the things that could deter some 3D artists, so if you want to see that uh, feature sooner rather than later, please send your feedback to the Procreate team. Now, about the 4K resolution. It looks like the only way we can get 4K textures is by loading an object that already has 4K textures in it, even if it's just a blank image. This is what I've been doing in order to get the higher resolution. Otherwise, Procreate will default to a 2K resolution. Maybe there is a way to change that, but I couldn't find an option for that, so when I import an object, I always make sure I include a blank 4K image. Another thing I found quite weird is the fact that the 2D view of a texture only works for the color map. We have no way to expose the roughness or metallic map. I kinda expected that when I tapped on the individual maps, I would be able to see them in the 2D view, but it looks like this is not the case. We're also missing some niceties like the ability to use symmetry when drawing. Procreate has that functionality for 2D drawing, but it looks like it's disabled for 3D. Maybe it's a performance thing, but I would say it's needed, so this is definitely something the team should add in a future update. And finally, the last thing has to do with the default light setup. I think there is some room for improvement there. There were times where I felt like I wasn't getting the light information I needed. Thankfully, we can adjust the light setup and move things around according to our liking, but I feel that a good default setup would go a long way. And while we're at it, have an option to rotate the environment around right in the viewport. That would help quite a bit. And I think that's it as far as uh, missing uh, features go. So, what's the verdict? Personally, I absolutely love Procreate's 3D functionality. They managed to create a really useful feature set, especially for a version 1 product, that doesn't just look good on a demo, it actually can be used on a real project. I for one will use Procreate as a texturing app. Is it going to replace dedicated apps like Substance Painter? No, but I think there's a place for both. Even though Substance Painter is extremely powerful, I was never really a fan of it. So I think for some artists, Procreate might be the ideal texturing app. I personally don't need all the fancy features of Substance, and I also don't like the cluttered interface of uh, Substance, so something like Procreate feels much more natural to me. Especially when we take into account Procreate's great brushes and painting engine and the absolutely perfect Apple Pencil. This whole combo, Procreate and the iPad and Apple Pencil, feels like a much better setup for texturing, at least for my needs. 
Of course, there are artists who have to use more complex apps like uh, Substance Painter, but I'm glad that something like Procreate exists. It just makes things much more enjoyable. For the first time in quite a while, I'm actually enjoying the texturing process. It doesn't feel like a chore anymore. Anyway, enough talking. I would suggest you download the update and start experimenting. And of course, let me know how you feel about uh, Procreate's new functionality. Is it going to be something you'll use in your work? If you have any questions about the app or if there's uh, something I didn't cover, let me know in the comments below. And that's it for this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.